Nós estamos aqui ao vivo do SBU in situ, direto de Amsterdã, no EAU. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, uh, Kevin Zorn. Kevin Zorn is a very nice professor of the uh, University of Montreal. He has done some uh, procedures very much uh, harder in uh, accumulation and even in green light. Um, he is a very skilled professional, even in robotic surgery. It's a pleasure to have you here. We would like to know some of your experience with uh, accoblation for start, uh, even an overview of uh, BPH here at the AAU. Absolutely, so thank you for having me and uh, my background, I trained in my fellowship with robotic surgery and so with BPH after working with Dr. El Halali on Holup, that was my first introduction to BPH, that's how I learned before a TERP nice. Holup, so I understand the anatomy and to then bring on board green light that was in you know, 10 years ago I'm getting older but uh, to offer a minimally invasive uh, same-day surgery without much bleeding and to offer surgery in those patients who are anticoagulated as we both know with green light okay. uh, but in the last five years the explosion amount of different technologies for BPH have made it a little bit more difficult in our conversations with patients so not only are we trying to get the catheter out and getting them off meds but now we have to talk about ejaculation and sexual function and, and durability so enter in the era of minimally invasive techniques and resume uh, Eurolift, uh, which we have, I've had some experience with as well. And then with aquablation, which to me is the marriage of everything we want in urology, which is the cool ultrasound imaging technologies, and at the same time, a robot, which not is a little different than Da Vinci, because it's an automated uh, AI, artificial intelligence, that the robot actually executes the procedure. So everyone out there that's doing TERPs, no matter how good you are and how much we all say we all do TERPs, each one of us does it a little bit differently. And the outcomes, the reproducibility, is the big question. Uh, so finally, we have a robot that can do what we would expect for a uh, TERP, but much faster. So we're able to do all cases under 45 minutes, wow. skin to skin, and that includes prostates even over 150 grams. Um, so aquablation, uh, if you don't know, is a, um, a combination of image base. So you use a transrectal ultrasound. So it's different than the other BPA surgery we do. We don't use a transrectal ultrasound. So you start with an ultrasound so you can see the, ultra, uh, the, the prostate, you measure the length, you measure the height, you see if there's a medial lobe. So everything's visualized and recorded. Then you pass a cystoscope, which is a hand piece. It's the only disposable piece, and that's a, a cost. Uh, but again, it's relative speaking to everything else. I think it's comparable. It's in the package, isn't it? in the package yeah. and that's the disposable piece. Everything else is reusable, and that docks onto the robot. Then there's a marriage of what you see cystoscopically with the disposable sheath and the ultrasound imaging. And once you've marriaged those together, then you'd use an ultrasound, you design where you want to treat. So you see the capsule, you see the median lobe, you see the vera montanum, because that's where the cystoscope is placed. So you see all these dots and you literally tap dots and you press the enter button and the computer generates an algorithm of what you'd want to treat. And you can use your mouse to move it a little bit wider, take a bit more tissue. And then each pass is usually up to seven centimeters in length, under four minutes. And most people are doing two or in bigger prostates, even over 300 grams, you do four passes. Each one of those takes four minutes. And from that point, then you do the hemostasis, which we'll get into. Yes, of course. That's a, a little bit of a concern. When we are dealing with, uh, with ablation in the first place, we, uh, talk, people talk about uh, complications rate, even uh, uh, bleeding or something. Can you address something like that? Absolutely. So if we all think of you know, your first experience understanding water, the water trials, that was the 30 to 80 gram prostates versus TERP. And the water too was the international 100 patients with the prostates over 80 grams. Um, you know, to 150 grams. So, and in all these studies, it was the water beam only to ablate the tissue, followed by a catheter with a balloon. No hemostasis. And in those series, the water one and the water two trial had transfusion rates of 1% and 5%, which everyone had heard, this is a very bloody surgery. You're right, because at that point in these trials, dating past four or five years ago, we were dealing with no hemostasis. It was traction control and CBI. It's different now. So today, it? if we were to go and say, just like green light, we yep, do green light, and people still remember, I had that bad experience with green light. Hold on, was that the first generation, the 80 watt? Of course, it didn't do well. There was a lot of strictures. It wasn't powered enough. 
So just like the iPhone one, right? So you can think back, yeah, it's not 2008, it was like a couple of years ago, but things have evolved. So aquablation and not just the instrumentation, but also the, uh, the, the technique and the understanding, the appreciation that most of the bleeding is at the bladder neck. So at the end of your eight minutes of two pass aquablation, you go in with a turp loop, we elec, we suction out the clots, and you look for significant bleeders with the uh, your loop, be it monopolar or bipolar, and you repeat and you that for, it. and you coagulate. So take time to spend on that bleeding, and the transfusion rate of over 2,000 collective cases that we've done is down down to 0.8 percent, which I think is very respectable. And it's very low, isn't it? I think I, I mean it's never you know you want everything to be zero percent, but the best way to have zero transfusion is not to operate. <laughs> Give them more drugs. <laughs> And just to end the, our talk, it's a very nice talk. Thank you, Zorno, again. And I would like to address something about mist. We are starting with this in Brazil, and this is a new technology. And an overview, and what do you think about it, and uh, how can you address this with your patient? So again, part of our much more discourse with our patients now, more than ever, we have a menu of, uh, I feel like a chef, I have to explain all the different options. And with MIST, uh, again, it's an office-based procedure. So in Canada, we have a you know he healthcare system which is all nationalized, so uh, patients wait long for their surgeries. So now we are able to offer something that's in the office, kind of like a cystoscopy. So I've done Eurolift, it requires a bit more anesthesia, and we know the treatment rates seem to be higher. Uh, a counseling on patients of th five year data is about 30% patients will need to be retreated, be it surgically, on 14%, and the rest on medical therapy. So given that cost, not many people are doing the Eurolift, especially it's not indicated for median lobes. Of course. The Resume is a uh, one cost disposable gun that injects over nine second therapy into lateral lobes and median lobes and we've reported a reduction in prostate volume at six months and one year about 25 percent so it does nice. what dual therapy to me it's the surgical pill you're able to do this in the office setting in under 10 minutes under a periprosthetic block and patients the downside is i tell patients you're not going to like me for the next month because we've injected some steam it's very quick but there's that sloughing that's going to occur and there is the dis inflammation and that can take a couple of months three months to get your good results but the durability is 96 percent outcomes without surgical failure and reductions significance in ipss and it shrinks the prostate unlike Eurolift. Uh, and again, it takes time away from your OR. But the way I look at it, and some people, you know, uh, is it's not as good as a nucleation, you know, or it's not as good as green light. You're right, it's, 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 it's a smaller it's reduction. Yep. However, the sexual improvement, there's not the uh, ejaculatory dysfunction, there's no ED. You can redo it. And the win, the win I like to look at this is that we're always comparing to surgeries beating other surgeries. But the big thing is the cost of dual therapy is about a thousand, two thousand bucks a year. And to get someone off drug therapy, which doesn't always work and comes with other side effects, that's a win. So if we can get men early in their 40s and 50s and not have to take 20 years of drug therapy, uh, you know, and getting them off with either iTind or Resume, I think that's the way to go. We are tending to compare mist with surgery, but we need to compare mist with medication, isn't it? I think that's a, a, a better way to go. Thank you so much, Zorn, for your patience here with us, and I hope you have um, a very good meeting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Obrigado. Thank you.